Hey there, paranormal ponderers and fellow zoners. You are in the Paranomaly Zone, your weekly dose of all things. You guessed it, paranormal, strange, and mysterious. This week, it is the video version of the Paranomaly Zone. Aren't you lucky, boys and girls? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> we got the apologies out of the way. Uh, yes. My name is Patrick Koffenberg. I'm responsible for this mess and as I mentioned earlier, I'm joined, as always, by my co-host with the ghost, the paranormal poster boy himself, the man known by family and friends as Casper, Mike Carbno. Now, Mike, you care to explain the Casper nickname? Well, I'm just Casper the Friendly Pasty Boy. Okay, so th <laughs> so uh, well, it, you know, it is uh, related to both the paranormal and skin tone, apparently, when yeah, it comes well, to you. <laughs> you know, I've always been into the paranormal. I... I'm as white as a ghost, so people pick that up, and I am Casper. So why not? I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's been good. going on for decades. What would you call me? Hmm. Oh, I won't let you. Other yeah, flippant. Okay. Oh, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I want Mike to like mute his mic right now for about ten minutes. I'm sure he's got ten thousand ideas running through his brain right oh, now. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, I it is know, good actually. to see you, though, Mike. This is a video it's... exclusive episode. Uh, the flagship episode will not be released this week because we're not recording one. No, we're doing an exclusive YouTube episode. And it's going to be a good one. Don't worry, everybody. We know that YouTube is a visual medium. We got it. You're not going to be forced to stare at our pasty faces for too much longer. <laughs> we're just doing the proper introduction. But this is going to be pretty cool. Um if you aren't familiar, but chances are, if you're checking out this podcast, you know that we focus on, as I said, all things paranormal, strange, and mysterious. So why not share some cool visuals of some classic, as you put them earlier, Mike, vintage photos, yes. ghost vintage. photos, alleged captures of some good old-fashioned floaties. Um, well, not all of them are floaties. <laughs> we're not talking toilet floaties. No. <laughs> Is that even possible on YouTube? It probably is, but uh, no, we're not going to be don't, showing those. You just don't do uh, put in the wrong subject matter. No, 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 no. You're fine. Yeah, and I, 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 I am frightened to think of the possibility of that thought <laughs> going through a human being's mind right now. But hey, Lord knows it, well, it happens. We all know the well, probably don't all know, but if you know the joke where it ends up when the law grows over, we'll die, we'll die. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'd like to hear from listeners or watchers on this one. Yeah. Not watchers. Uh, if they know. Viewers. Yeah, yeah, Viewers, yeah. yes. I know. Mike always <laughs> creeps me out like when he. Watchers. Yeah, when he says watchers, I'm just like, I'm picturing people hiding behind bushes, you know, like. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. it's At like, the yeah. edge of the forest in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no. <laughs> Viewers are uh, much loved YouTube subscribers. Uh, thank you so much for um, checking us out, guys. We, persevering. Yeah. Per, yeah. Per, per, <laughs> I can't even say that. For persevering, we really uh, appreciate it. Well, uh, pulling up some of these classic photos, Mike, we're, let's just dive right into it. I'm looking at my professional notes here. That's why I'm staring at, off the screen here. We're going to be looking at the, and you'll recognize these photos. If you're into the paranormal, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you are. And if uh, you haven't seen them, enjoy it because yeah, yeah, yeah. great stuff, great stories. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I highly doubt people haven't seen these, but uh, you never yeah. know. Uh, we're talking about the classic tulip staircase photo from 1966, uh, an alleged ghost boy captured in the actual Amityville house, captured in 1976. A really eerie, creepy photo from not that long ago, 2003, only 20 years, so not quite vintage yet. I don't know. Uh, the Older, Britain, vintage. Britain's Hampton Court photo. The and on that one now, was that originally a video and? What we have is yes, a photo. Yes, it's, it's, it's a still. It's a still. It's a, it's a, yeah. thank you for, for bringing that up, making that clear. Yeah, it's a security camera uh, footage. And the, um, I guess, a screenshot that we are going to be sharing yeah. here is what we're focusing but on. But the video, you know, if you haven't seen that, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, we're going to have a good time talking about this stuff because we're not saying these are 100% legit. Okay. Um, any skeptics out there watching pseudo skeptics yes i'm talking right. to you dave schrader i'm going to use that i'm <laughs> use that term until the day i die you know he's watching this right now um 
the falling man ghost photo from the 1950s. <laughs> that when just I, killed me. When I said that earlier before we had a, a <laughs> absolute system crash here, Mike laughed his ass off when I said the falling man photo. <laughs> He's just well, picturing some yeah, ghost. Yeah, when you picture the photo, it's... <laughs> It's well, it was it was also known as the hanging man photo, but then I, I don't really like that because you picture this grotesque, awful image of someone hanging from a noose, you know, from their neck. Yeah. I guess you can technically call it the falling man photo. And then finally, the all-time classic from 1936, we're talking about the brown lady of Rhinum Hall. Um, yeah. I'll tell you that right now before we pull up the first image here. That's the picture, the one that I remember the most from my childhood. The brown mm -hmm. lady oh, image. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember it from my childhood. Yeah. Uh, like you I said, know, 1936, for gosh sakes. Yeah. So it's been around for a long Impressive. time. Impressive. Well, Mike, let's dive right into it. Sound good? Yes. Um, we're just going to go in order here. We're going to pull up that first photo, the tulip staircase, the Queen's House tulip staircase photo. Mike, without any further ado, let's check it out, all right? All right. So there it is. Uh, yeah, classic photo, Mike. Um, we did talk about this on a uh, Patreon episode a while back, and we kind of did a mini deep dive into this photo, but I cannot get tired of this photo. It's I know. one of the best. It's one of the most classic alleged, I mean, we got to throw that out there, alleged right. captures of an actual ghost. Now, the picture we're looking at is colorized, and... Um, I don't remember it always being colorized. I remember it being black and white. That's when I first became aware of this photo, but it's still creepy and cool as hell. Now, looking at the photo, you can see, you know, you can see the wrinkles, you can see the crease marks on this on this photo. And I'll say when I was a kid when this photo first came to my attention, I always thought, Mike, that that glowing the lights glowing in the background mm -hmm. there, I always thought that was like a three-eyed ghost. <laughs> yeah. I never yeah, saw I the we... actual image at the bottom of the <laughs> picture. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And it's kind of hard to figure out. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, when you look at it, you see well, this, you, uh, you see the, banister. the yeah, you see the banister, and down at the right corner, you see what looks like an yeah. image, like a human in. Uh, well, it looks like a human shape with its left arm on the railing, its left hand on the railing, perhaps its right hand further up on the railing. You know, I've always had the impression too, since I was a kid, that there was more than one ghost on here. Really? Yep, the one in the back, and then I thought there was something in front of it that wasn't as pronounced, but then. You see underneath the lights, there's what could be a, a, a hand or another right. hand. That's well to me. That looks like the yeah. right hand extended you know, up on out. the railing. Yeah, like he's like it's a spirit of somebody that's kind of struggling to get up the stairs almost. Yeah. Now the background of this briefly, uh, again referred to the as the Queen's House Ghost on the Tulip Staircase, taken in 1966. Uh, the story goes, a retired uh, Canadian reverend and his wife visited the Queen's house in Greenwich, London. The couple had heard about the famous tulip staircase and took a photograph of it. However, once developed on their return to Canada, they saw the photograph had also captured this image that we're looking at of kind of looks like a spectral shrouded being that looks like it's ascending the stairs. And Mike, listen to this, in pursuit of a second and possibly third figure. So there you go. I'm learning more stuff as, we, as you know, every day. I've never Something noticed. I knew when I was, since I was a kid, I guess. I've never <laughs> noticed another alleged, unless that one hand that you talk about is, a, is supposedly another specter, but. But it is hard to tell because, I mean, the way you described it as the outstretched hand. Right. Makes sense, too. I mean. Uh, now, the, um, the reverend and his wife, uh, Mrs. Hardy, R.W. Hardy, were adamant that there was no figure on the stairway when the photograph was taken. And the image remains an enigma to this day. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think about this one? It's a classic. Um, <laughs> Mike, final thoughts on this one before we move on to the Amityville Ghost Boy photo. What, do you, what are your final thoughts? I, I like it. it it's... Uh, if if it was going to be uh, something faked, 
I think they would have put more detail in it and had it more, you know, I don't know. But being from the 60s, it's hard to say. I mean, you can't compare it to like the old, old vintage ones from you know, turn of the century and things like that. But um, I think it's real. I I like it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn cool. All right, boys and girls, moving mm. onward and upward. All right, so there you have it. There's Mike again. There's me. Uh, yeah, the Tulip Staircase photo, 1966. One of my all-time favorites. Um, hey, you know, um, if this has been, like, scientifically debunked, I haven't heard of it, but if you know something out there, viewers, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Go ahead and ruin our fun. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all part of the fun. Hey, you know, that's a good way of looking at it. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it is. It's well, great interaction with the uh, listeners. Or the, the viewers. Oh, thank you for not saying watchers. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, onward and upward, Mike. Um, I just sent you the link here again. We're going to be talking about another really creepy photo. Um, paranormal or not, it's creepy looking. Yes. If you allow yourself to think about and get in that mindset. Uh, we're talking about the Amityville ghost photo here. And I'll pull that up here shortly. But it's supposed, perhaps, supposedly the image of one of the DeFeo family members um, yeah. from the infamous Amityville murders slash paranormal story, whatever, however you want yeah. to describe Very it. Very young boy. Um, this one was taken in 1976, the year of my birth, Mike. Mm -hmm. The year of my birth. I don't know. I just wanted to say that. So, <laughs> uh, do you have any brief thoughts on the Amityville story in general, Mike, before we show this photo? Well... You know, it's still one of those things that, is it real? Did it happen? Is it a book deal? Is it, you know, did anything happen? Yeah. But it's a hell of a story. And You know what? It could be all the above. It could be legit and it could Absolutely. be a, a book story or, you know, it's a book deal. It could be anything. But um, That's right. again, I think we did do a Patreon episode on the Amityville. Or we, we did. also did a, a regular episode on it. I don't know. We, we've talked about this several times. So uh, mm -hmm. cheap plugs for the Patreon page and the Filling <laughs> Ship podcast and all the good stuff. Well, Mike, um, without any further ado, let's take a look at this photo. Yes. All right, Mike, there it is. Um, <laughs> as the viewers can tell, I'm sharing this photo. It's from historyvershollywood.com. Could this image reveal the ghost? of the murdered boy, John DeFeo. Now, first and foremost, this if that's a ghost, that's a that's like the exact opposite of a transparent figure. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, uh, yeah, fully, it's very human looking. Well, uh, yeah. But, I, you know, people have reported seeing ghosts or, spirits that are you couldn't tell the difference between it being a live person or a that's a very spirit. true that's that's very yeah, true so. i mean i was just i was going for the cheap joke there yeah so. well it oh okay but it does <laughs> make you you know wonder you know when you see something like that was it just a real boy and then the the eyes you know reflection from a flash who knows I exactly know. that's the thing it seems like a very physical type of um reaction to a, a flash you know but uh, flash photo, I should say. But as this story goes, this photo was again allegedly taken in uh, inside the Amityville house way back in 1976. It's become very famous, uh, infamous, if you will. And as you can obviously obviously see, it features what looks to be a a little boy, very bright white eyes. Or again, could simply be the reflection who is kind of peeking out of this little doorway. And it, again, this is inside the DeFeo house. Um, George Lutz revealed this photo on the Merv Griffin show back in 1979, three years after it was taken, obviously. And it was alleged to have been captured by Gene Campbell, who was a professional photographer, who was part of the team who worked with famous Legendary paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now, the story goes that Gene had set up an automatic camera that took infrared pictures to capture the second floor landing during the night and equipped with black and white film. 
his camera captured this photo, which again looks like a supposed ghost boy. Some have speculated it could be the ghost of, as we mentioned earlier, the murdered child, John DeFeo, who had lived in the house with his family prior to the Lutzes. Others believe that the image is that of Paul Bartz, an investigator working with the Warrens the night that the photo was taken. Now, did they, do they hire little boys as investigators? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Bring this little six-year-old kid along for the ride. Um, that's an interesting uh, theory, I guess. Hmm. They also say that the white eyes could have been caused by the infrared film. Now, dozens of websites and teams, investigative teams, you know, they have set out to prove or disprove the this photo. But Mike, as the case with so many famous photos, guess what? It has never been truly debunked, right? Um, or figured out for that matter. So it's fun to speculate. I will say that it it does look eerily similar to that, you know, the picture of John DeFeo there. It very much does. That's why I was looking at very close that I kind of zoomed in on it on that where it showed the two. And, uh, you know, could be the hair is very much alike. Uh, That's what I was thinking, too. The hair is very similar. You know, no shape as much as you can see it looks so much. that The, the distance between the, the nose and the lips. I mean, yeah. you know, you start looking at, you know, comparisons. Mike's got a train coming through, by the yeah. way. He, do, he doesn't have gas. It's, it's a train. It's a, no. it's a real train. <laughs> uh, it's uh, quitting time. But, so it's, uh, it's, I don't know what I think. I mean, just to be clear, um, I don't know what I think about the whole Amityville story in itself. Right. So that's why uh, it's hard for me to, So let's if I have to choose, I would, I, if I had to choose, I'm not poo-pooing stuff. I would say that this just looks like an alive kid somehow. And it, it does. How do we know it was taken in 1976? How do we know who took it? I mean, we, we don't know. We, um, well, there's so many questions like that, but there's so many questions like that about how many ghost everything photos yeah. that we of don't course. have answers. But if we go by, say, let's say it, it did happen, um, and we're trying to decide if this is actually the ghost of John DeFeo or not, Johnny DeFeo, um, it, it, there, it just looks like there's some good similarities, but then when you look at the face, if you zoom in on that face, it looks like it's been through something. I mean, look, it looks like there's could be blood coming out of the corners of its mouth, like the kid's mouth, the, the nose has got like... The nose looks like it has blood on it almost. Like there's something, you know, around that, that, that eye, there could be... I mean, you can, you can think... A lot of things about it. It looks bad. I mean, it looks like somebody that's been traumatized, very traumatized. Yeah, I don't know, I like man. I, I like it as a as something that could be a very distinct possibility. Yeah, and I like the fact that it's that we're that we're talking about it. You know, so right. <sighs> and they reported that they, you know, when this photo was taken, that there were no kids anywhere in the house. There's no right. It was just the investigators. Um, so, so okay, Mike. Uh, quickly, um, if you had to say, I know, I know, we know that you like the photo. I do. Um, I I just can't say that it is paranormal in nature. But what say you, my friend? We definitely cannot definitively say that for sure. Yeah. But um, with all the the questionable things about it, there are possibility. I don't, I'll still go stick by what I said about liking it and, um, yeah. And why not? I mean, it, it, and whatever it is, I, it's, it's creepy. Yeah. I mean, knowing the, the story the factor, yeah, well, yeah. Knowing the alleged story of what happened in that house, you know, um, yep. and you let your mind go a little bit. It's like, Oh yeah, it yeah. gives you the heebie jeebies for sure. So, um, and I'm not saying it isn't a ghost. I want to make that perfectly clear. You got that yeah. everyone? Huh? You, you back there, you got that. All right. You mean that that guy that you have standing in your corner all the time when you're recording? Is that who you're pointing and talk to? I'm, I'm pointing to the viewers out there. Okay, I want to lay back there. <laughs> as right. long as you don't keep them under your desk, I mean, it's fine. Who's to say they aren't there already? I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, moving onward, Mike, we're going to talk about... This one is... I love how this 
screen capture looks. Again, we yeah. mentioned this earlier. This is from security footage. But, uh, well, without any further ado, Mike, let's just pull this photo up and uh, yammer away about it. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, here we are. I'll take a look at this. <laughs> this is good. I, I like the, the image no matter what it is. Yeah. It just looks super creepy, super cool. And again, it could just be the, the angle, you know, the lighting. Um, well, you know, and then that's like the grainy like period nature. costume that this, whatever yeah. this thing is, yeah. is in, you know, is, uh, <laughs> you well, know, that, that you know. all right, perfect, Mike. I'm going to pull us back up on the screen now. <clears throat> hey, I'm gonna... All right, Mike. So there you have it. Uh, Britain's Hampton Court. Alleged ghost photo, uh, creepy as hell. Yeah. Regardless if it's legit Very. or not. I love how it looks. I love the imagery. Something's there. Obviously, something's there. Yeah. But what is it? Living or dead, who knows? Man, I, whoa. <laughs> as he says, living or dead, and something collapses in Mike's house. Or is that a dog running around? <laughs> oh, man. They've been pretty good. We've only had to stop about 95 times, but uh, that's okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, Mike, uh, moving on to the next one. <laughs> Mike, you just can't help but laugh every time we... Love I love this picture. <laughs> he loves the picture, and you know, it, like I said earlier, it, was, it can be referred to as both the hanging man or the falling man, and Mike just gets a <laughs> kick out of the falling man. Um, oh, if he's fixed. hanging by his ankles or his toes, yeah, <laughs> no, that's... No, it's like, what the heck? Um, well, let's not waste our, our viewers' time. Let's uh, yeah. pull this photo up and talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. All right, so here it is, Mike. Yeah, the 1950s, there is no um, exact date for when this photo was taken. Uh, mm. 1950s is all we have. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Delayed reaction there Ooh, on Mike's part. <laughs> yeah, just you know, I no, I, I was fighting it back, and I was winning at first, but I lost. <laughs> oh man, you know, I'm sitting here. I, you know, thankfully, the viewers can't see me right now, but I'm sitting here. I'm I'm trying to make yeah. myself upside down so I can look at the the head. It's like is that no. is that the back of the head? Or I just turned my phone upside down. And yeah, no, it I, is freaky. It is. There, it's freaky there, as there's hell. Two Almost women looks like and there's... two kids hanging upside down from the table. Oh, oh. wait, no, never mind. No, the kid. Oh, Jesus. I no. Okay. Yeah. No, you were looking <laughs> at right side up the first time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, but it is freaky though. When it wow. it almost looks like they're two like uh, like the glowing whites of eyes in the back of the head there, but it looks like. It, it, it should be the back of the head. That's what I'm getting there is the back of the head. Well, kind of, but okay. So, But then it doesn't really match the shirt because the shirt looks like the buttons are going right down the you know the, the middle there and almost. Can you zoom in on, on it on your yeah, oh, absolutely. screen? Do you have a thing where you can flip your picture like you click on and it flips? I'm zooming in as much as I can here for the viewers. Yeah. Um, I can um, flip it here. I'm zoomed in on just the Ooh. body. Oh, yeah. I'm zooming it in. for. <laughs> yeah. so now, okay, so now if you can. Nope, now the dog is, the mic's got to mute the mic here because the dogs are creeped out by it too. So it looks like I have it upside down. You can see if this was a dude holding his arms straight up. It looks like well, if he was facing you. It looks like his left hand, you can see his thumb on what would yeah. be his left hand. Yeah. His right hand, you can't really see anything clearly. But the face, the slash, the head, nothing's clear about that. The only thing I can see remotely yeah. is that it looks like the back of a head. But like well, I said, the back of the head doesn't match the shirt. Right. If you look at the shirt, yeah, there's that, that open collar right and just below the the point of the bottom point of the collar there's like a long white thing that's like hanging there and look at how like how tight fitting it is okay so it's like you don't see the bottom of the shirt you don't see like pants up at the to the waist or anything no um let's on give the, a on, let's give yeah. a brief background here like i said this was yeah, do that 
this that. is taken in the 1950s by the Cooper family. Um, the Cooper family and uh, living in Texas at the time, right. they bought this house. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. They bought the house, and hey, shockingly, they moved into it. Because <laughs> you know a lot of people buy houses, and then they never move into them. Now, on the first night in the house, the father, Father Cooper, took a photograph of the family to commemorate the event. The event posed at this dining room table were Mr. Cooper's wife, their two young sons, and Mr. Cooper's mother. Now, days passed, maybe even weeks passed, and finally uh, Mr. Cooper decided to take the exposed role to the local pharmacy to have the pictures developed. A week later, he picked them up. Upon retrieving the small packet of snapshots from the pharmacy, and he came across, opening up the packages, he came across this picture he had taken of his family on that first night in their new home. And what he saw, what looked like a hanging body from the ceiling, as we've been looking at it, obviously. Now, obviously, they swear it wasn't there when he took the photo. <laughs> I hope to God it wasn't there when he took the photo. <laughs> yeah, I would have. I, I just, I would have done something other than taking a picture. Yeah, exactly. No, I would have taken a picture first, and I would have <laughs> seen if he needed help the, getting down or something. The, the the kids are crying and wailing, and the the grandma and the mom <laughs> like, no, nope, look at the camera, kitties. Don't mind the hanging body there. Oh man! Now, as he says, it wasn't there when he took the photo. So where did this image come from? Was it the apparition of a deceased former tenant of the house? Um, the first evidence of the image you see above, and we're looking at here, where it was named the family gathering uh, photo, some obviously call it fake. The only uh, uh, Another explanation is that it is simply double exposure. But this article says that the body, quote-unquote body in the picture, is that of the, if the body in the picture is that of the photographer and as a result of double exposure from an earlier accidental exposure, and is upside down because the camera flipped over as it fell from his grasp, then his body is positioned exceedingly odd. If one were to invert... <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if one were to invert his form in the picture as if he were standing up, then he would have both hands raised above his head, which is a rather strange position for taking a picture. <laughs> and then it ends by saying, maybe the uncle was simply a gymnast. But... um. <laughs> uh, hanging um, by his toes by a bar from the ceiling oh mike is this simply a case of double exposure going on here is this uh, I, don't, I don't know is this a was this a crazy picture of the <sighs> of the uncle the crazy dad doing the goofy you know posing a goofy manner from uh, you know a few photos down the roll um i don't i don't know it's you know, when you look okay so when you look at the body again okay so <laughs> Oh, darn it, dogs. Okay, so Mike was saying, when you look at the body <laughs> again, nope, Mike's on record as saying, shut up now. You're heard on YouTube yelling at your dogs. <laughs> and that was my big voice. Um, okay, try you, to you, try you to continue, to, Mike. You're, you're, you have to uh, be louder than the dogs sometimes. I gotcha. So you were saying, though, the body, if you look at the quote-unquote okay, so body. so if you look at the body and how the... Uh, when the arms are up like that and the, sh the sleeves are pulled short because the arms stretched out. Hey, good point. Good observation. So that's, something, that's something that would happen. Um, they're shadowing behind the arms, though. I mean, especially that one. Is it shadows? Uh. You know, it looks like it to me, but is it or is it part of a double exposure? That's right. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking here. <sighs> I'd love if you to look think. At the, if you look at the face, if you turn it if it is upside down, you look at the face and there's lighter parts on where the face would be. That might be some kind of indication of, uh, you know, even though we can't tell what it is, like a nose and a mouth and whatever. And then it looks like the head would be kind of tilted back into the one side. You know, I, chances are there are, people smarter than us looking at this right now yeah. and they're like screaming at their devices saying, my god these guys are idiots you know this is simply a case of such and such and such right this photo did this and this photo did that uh, i, I want to believe that this is a creepy ass paranormal photo but i i uh, i can't pull it that is. trigger mike i cannot pull that proverbial paranormal trigger nope. on this one i can't either and you know one thing that's this, this is kind of weird but uh 
Um, when the picture was taken, whoever took it, this picture was taken where all three or all of these people plus the hanging man are are centered in the picture. If they were if if they were taking a picture of these uh, this two ladies and the two kids, you know that's another. Good why would they have this big open spot? You know, next to them, unless they wanted the candles in there for some reason. But, Maybe they wanted the candles um, in there. Maybe that's it. Yeah, because it's not. Hey, I got. It's yeah. not centered at all. I mean, uh, right. And also, that's why the head and neck is all black because it's hanging right on the flame of that candle. Oh, it's all charred. Is that what you're saying? It's all charred. <laughs> no, that was just a stupid observation. But okay, Mike. Um, you said you had questions, though. You're. Uh, we ended. The viewing yeah, the, of the photo. Know, the biggest question I had was joking about it centering. looking like it was like it was you know a charred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the charred remains yeah, of some poor right sap. Over that middle candle, I don't know. But, so uh, uh, I don't know. It's fun to speculate, that's for sure. But yeah. again, I I can't I can't say it's a photo of a ghost. It's it's got to be some sort of double exposure. Some sort of something's going on there with with the pictures. Yeah, and but the thing, yeah, and the thing too is if if it was hoaxed, if it was done on purpose. That's a weird thing to come up with. To, it's creative, you know, though. That's pretty creative. Pretty I mean, creative like, and, and hey, almost too creative. But you know, seventy not years later, we're sitting here talking about it on a on a exactly. paranormal podcast. So yeah. they accomplished something, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, Mike. Let's let's end it on uh, or end it with a proverbial bang here. Okay, um, I'm going to send you the link to the classic photo here. The classic paranormal. Alleged paranormal photograph. I'm talking about, of course, the brown lady of Rhinum Hall. I'm just pulling up my phone here, sending it to Mike so we can get the the background info. Um, Mike, without any further ado, let's take a look at this. I'm ready. All right, there it is, Mike. The classic. This is the one I briefly mentioned this, I believe, during this attempt to record the, the episode. Or the one where everything crashed on me. But this is the one that, I don't know if it's, <laughs> my throat just gurgled. The brown lady's coming alive in my, in, I was going to say coming alive in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. And I did just say it. I did just yeah, say that. That deserves the word moist. Yep, I'm leaving that in too. I am not editing that out. <laughs> it's, oh, man. Well, that's, that's part of how, how yeah. we... That's how we roll here on the yeah. Paranormal Zone. But this photo <laughs> <laughs> is... That is, was funnier than the hanging guy. <laughs> ah, man. Okay, right. All right. Okay, uh, this photo is what... Well, again, I can't exactly say if this is what sparked my interest in the paranormal, but it definitely it definitely didn't yeah. halt to my interest, that's for sure. Um, this is a classic photo, Mike. Now, I still don't know if this one's been legitimately debunked and scientifically proven one way or the other i'm sure there are some people that uh you know i'm sure james randy debunked it before he passed away oh i'm sure hundreds of times probably you did know. it in his sleep you know <laughs> but uh yeah like classic you know like you said when you know this is like a picture from our childhood that really kind of was one of those early things that yeah kept us going uh, briefly, the background, the backstory of this. This is an image that was published. Um, well, first and foremost, it became one of the most famous hauntings in the United Kingdom, the Brown Lady of Rhinum Hall, supposedly a ghost that haunts, obviously, Rhinum Hall in Norfolk, India. Uh, India Norfolk, England. <laughs> Man, I'm just all over the place. England, here. India. Yeah. <laughs> now, the Brown Lady is so named because of the Brown Brocade brocade dress it is claimed she wears we're looking at this image right now the identity of the ghost now according to the legend the identity of the brown lady of rhinum hall is the ghost of dorothy walpole 1686 through 1726 the sister of robert walpole is a walpole i don't know i'll say walpole walpole generally regarded as the first prime prime minister of Great Britain, so that's kind of a that's a very brief uh, background to um, who this spirit is alleged to be. Now she is alleged to have been, well, she didn't allege to have died. She 
lived in Raynham Hall until her death in 1726 from smallpox. The first recorded claim of a sighting of the brown lady ghost was by a Lucia Stone, and this was concerning a gathering at Raynham Hall in Christmas of 1835. Stone said that Charles Townsend had invited various guests to the hall, including a Colonel Loftus, to join in the Christmas festivities. Well, Loftus. there's where it goes mad. That's where it goes back. Talk about eggnog again, man. My gosh. Mm. Uh, Loftus and another guest named Hawkins said they had seen the brown lady one night as they approached their bedrooms, noting in particular the dated brown dress she wore. The following evening, Loftus claimed to have seen the brown lady again, later reporting that on his oca- on this occasion, he was drawn to the specter's empty eye sockets, dark mm. in the glowing face. That's terrifying. She had her eyes scratched out. That's terrifying. You yes, know, it is. You wonder, you, imagine? you wonder if that was kind of maybe, if this image and that description was maybe behind the creative mind of Dan Aykroyd in that classic <laughs> ghost in the library scene opening oh, up Ghostbusters, you know? I wonder. You never know. B. Uh, several sightings occurred throughout the years. Uh, we won't waste everyone's time here because there's quite a bit of them. But this yeah. photo in oh, particular yeah. was published by Country Life magazine and was taken by captured Captain Hubert C. Provend, a London-based photographer working for the um, the above-mentioned Country Life magazine. He and his assistant, Indri, Indri, Indra, Shira, were taking photographs of Rhino Hall for an article they claimed that they had already taken a photograph of the hall's main staircase and were setting up to take a second when Shira saw a quote vapory form gradually assuming the appearance of a woman moving down the stairs towards them under Shira's direction Proven quickly took the cap off the lens while Shira pressed the trigger to activate the camera's flash later when the negative was developed the famous image of the brown lady was revealed uh, shortly thereafter, thereafter, noted paranormal investigator Harry Price interviewed both Proven and Shiro and reported, I will say at once, I was impressed. I was told a perfectly simple story. Mr. Indrid Shira saw the apparition descending the stairs at the precise moment when Captain Proven's head was under the black cloth. A shout and the cap was off and the flashbulb fired, which the results which we see with the results which we now see. See, I could not shake their story, and I had no right to disbelieve them. Only collusion between the two men would account for the ghost if it is fake. The negative is entirely innocent of any faking. Uh, briefly, skeptical reaction, or reception, I, sh- I should say. Critics have claimed that Shira, f- Shira faked the image by putting grease or a similar substance on the lens in the shape of a figure or moved down the stairs himself during an exposure. Others claim that the image is an accidental double exposure that light somehow got into the camera. So there you go. And it goes on and on about other critics. Joe Nickel, you know. Let's well, you hear what he had to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want me to say that? Okay. Nah, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, what uh, did he say? <laughs> oh, he just says it was evidence of double exposure. So, yeah, of course. Or an example, I should say. So, Well, the double exposure sure uh, found a, the right spot on the stairs to appear like it was coming down. It kind of did, didn't it? Um, yeah. Or the idea of putting grease on the lens. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. I love the story of seeing an image descend the stairs and slowly taking form. Such a powerful enough energy to actually, yeah. you could see it visualize in front of you. And um, the as I was saying, like the sh- the sheer energy that was that it, that had to be manifesting in order to see it turning into this image of a woman, this alleged image of a woman. I want right. to believe it so bad, Mike. It's just, it's the classic. It's the classic ghost photo. <sighs> you what say you, man? We'll wrap it up here with that. Um, you know, thoughts? I I another picture that I love. Uh, grew up with, like you said, um, you know, it would be such a letdown and heartbreaking if it came out that the true story behind this and how it was done and faked and everything. Um, I am going to continue to believe that it's real. The story is real. Um, you know, call it, uh, 
the feeling that I get about it, or just like you said before, wanting to believe that it's real because how great and iconic it is. I mean, it is iconic when it comes to ghost, ghost photography. Um, I love it. I know. It's my take. I know. I, I love it too. I love all these photos. I mean, I'm sentimental about this one. I mean, yeah, don't start crying. You know, I mean, you're no, okay. No, nah. <laughs> no, if it was a picture of your dad coming down the stairs, then I would start crying. Oh, my God. <laughs> you would start crying. Well, what the hell would I do? I oh, know. yeah. Yeah. Man, uh, well, thanks for making this work, Mike. This is great. Thank you to everyone watching this. I hope this has been fairly entertaining. Um, of course, there are countless oh, alleged um, yeah. ghost That's photos exaggerating. out there. <laughs> yeah, not exaggerating at all. I mean, countless shows, too. I mean, <laughs> Paranormal Caught on Camera seems to have awesome stuff every week when it's on the air, you know? so You uh, do see some stuff on there where it's like, now I know that was debunked. Sure. I mean, well, of course, you know. But you know, and yeah, but still a lot of fun to watch. I mean, absolutely. Well worth it. Definitely well worth it. Um, and this has been well well worth it, Mike. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. This was our uh, I guess YouTube exclusive, not just one. We're going to do several more of these as time goes on if you don't mind, viewers. So yeah. uh No if worries. You mind, let us know. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah. Please do, because this is painful for us to show our faces. So <laughs> Yeah, and apologies again for, yeah. for that. Yeah, but. it's all good, man. Well, <laughs> again, until next week, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Mike, what do our awesome Paranomaly Zone listeners and friends need to do? Peace out.